Whether you have pain in your back or joints, surgery may not be the answer. Instead of the dangers involved in cutting out tissue, consider healing and rejuvenating the area with stem cells, platelet-rich plasma, or prolotherapy. The treatments that are available to professional athletes are now available for you. Watch the videos at jointrehab.com or call the Darrow Wellness Institute at 800-300-9300. 800-300-9300. That's 800-300-9300. Welcome back to Living Pain-Free with Dr. Mark Darrow. I'm your host, Nita Valens, and we're taking your calls today at 866-870-5752 right here in the studio. When you phone the program today, you get Dr. Darrow's latest book for free. It's called Stem Cell and Platelet Therapy, Regenerate, Don't Operate. And you can also check out the website at www.joint.com rehab.com and see Dr. Darrow performing treatments on videos and you can email him off of every page on the site that's jointrehab.com and we have a caller for you I know it so this is interesting I love these kind of calls thank you so much um, Ronnie for calling in so what is my opinion on a Tommy John surgery you want to tell us who Tommy you probably know Johan Otani of the um Los Angeles Angels, and winner of the Most Valuable Player Award two of the last three years, is about to go undergo Tommy John surgery. And I'm okay. wondering, is, would stem cell injections offer any kind of an alternative for this type of surgery? That's what we do all the time. So my answer is hopefully. There's never a promise with the surgery or with regenerative medicine. Medicine should not have promises attached to it. But in my personal experience, we treat these frequently, and people get better. Pictures get better. And Tommy John surgery was uh, back in, was it 1974 or something like that? He had that reconstruction. Do you remember the details? Right, the Tommy John, the pitcher. That was the first one. Yeah. Um, what happened to him after his surgery? Went back to pitching, and um, he did pretty good, I guess, right? So anyway, the, the um, ulnar collateral ligament, is on the inside of the elbow and helps keep your elbow joint in place. It connects the the bones of the upper arm to the lower arm. And uh, pitchers frequently, by snapping their wrist and arms to get speed, will irritate that ligament. And it's something that we can inject with platelets and or stem cells and regrow any kind of a tear. If it's a, a complete tear, It may be more of a problem, but it may not be the issue at all either. And this is one of the most difficult things that I have to impart to patients and uh, people who are wanting to get information is that it may not be that ligament that is this person's issue, okay? Just because you get an MRI and it shows a tear. I don't know if you were listening to to the show right before the break, I mentioned my right shoulder has three tears, a labral tear, a supraspinatus tear, and a subscapularis tear, but I have no pain, all right? I'm going to go play Mm -hmm. golf later today. I can throw a ball. I can do anything I want. I can lift weights, and I do all that stuff. So how can I do that if I have tears? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you, Ronnie? Mm -hmm. Yes. One doesn't compute to the other. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, actually. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell um, you this. This is just like my own theory. I've never even mentioned it, I don't think, to anyone before. But it just popped into my head. When we do a surgery, we're creating um, a lot of blood flow in an area, right? When you cut open right. the body, it, it bleeds, right? Yes? Yes. Okay, right. that just makes sense. What I'm doing is I'm injecting blood right? The platelets from the blood are stem cells. And by the way, the bone marrow, where we can take stem cells from, also has, uh, you know, the the bone marrow makes blood and it makes stem cells, right? And a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So what if doing a surgery was just a very crude way of doing regenerative medicine? Do you get where I'm going on this? Uh, Yes. Yeah, I see what you mean. So why cut the body open to make it bleed when we can use a teeny little needle and inject with blood the platelets, PRP, 
or stem cells and heal it that way. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And certainly, if I have an injury, I don't jump to the surgeon or the surgery. I jump to getting injections, injecting myself on the front of my body or having a friend do it if it's my neck or back. And then see what happens. Because too many of these surgeries fail. Way too many uh-huh. fail. I'd say probably 50% of the surgeries that, uh-huh. I, that I see fail. Well, with, with the Tommy John surgery, there's a, a recovery uh, time of at least a year. That's the other thing. Uh, there's no real recovery time with regenerative medicine. We want people to stop what they're doing for at least a couple of weeks. That's the recovery and see how they do. And then they may need another injection. Now, when I do pro athletes or elite athletes or someone who flies in from another country or from across the country, I may actually inject them every day for four or five days Uh just to put as as many cells as I can into that area because they're leaving. But if it's someone local, the typical process is we ask people to come back in two weeks for a re-examination and see how they're doing. At that point, we might re-inject them again if they don't have the healing that they want. So your question about uh, would this work on a Tom, instead of a Tommy John surgery? It has many, 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 many times. And um, we get a lot of high school pitchers, college pitchers um, that are coming in for that issue where they're ready for a surgery and they never have to get it. Wow, well, wish I could send cell on to you. Because, and the other good thing about it is if the stem cell injections don't seem to help, there's still time to do the surgery. I mean, it, because you, you'll be able to tell um, within a few injections whether it's working, right? Typically, yes. There are some very resilient cases that don't heal for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've got um, advanced arthritis in a joint, but typically... Um, areas around the ulnar collateral ligament are not that long, don't take that long to heal. And again, it may not be that ulnar collateral ligament that's the problem. There's a lot of, a lot of other anatomy oh. in, the, in the neighborhood. So well, like I, I tell so. everybody, people, people, people send me their MRI and they go, can you help me? I go, not with it. I can't look at an MRI to tell you if I can help you. I've got to touch the area and see where the pain is coming from. Because it may not be coming from the area that the MRI or X-ray shows. Mm-hmm. And the other thing we know, there, there are studies, tons of studies that are done. And my book, Stem Cell and Platelet Therapy, Regenerate, Don't Operate, has these studies in it that show if we take people that don't have any pain at all and we do MRIs or X-rays, we're going to find things that look bad, things that look like they need surgery. Yeah. Is this is this clicking in your brain how this works? Yeah, I'm just curious with the Tommy John surgery. So you're saying it doesn't typically, it's not typically one certain kind of surgery that repairs a specific tear. It can be uh, a number of different things in the shoulder. It may not be that tear that's causing the problem. And the other thing, this is really crazy, MRIs are overly sensitive. That means they're going to show things that aren't really there. So, for instance, I've had many people um, have an MRI with an ACL rupture in the knee, Mm -hmm. rotator cuff tear in the shoulder, and then the surgeon goes in and they go, I can't understand this. It's not torn. Mm -hmm. MRIs show things that aren't there. They're overly sensitive. Well, (laughs) I understand that's not good either. You, You don't have to cut. You shouldn't do it. No, you don't, you don't want to cut unless you have to. There's too many side effects. There's too many what we call sequelae. There's infections. Um, a lot of areas that are, are operated on have immediate arthritis after a surgery because they do cleanups. Wow. <coughs> they take out you tissue that. that shouldn't be taken out. Well, if I can get a hold of the cell on, I'll, maybe I can send him an email or something because... Uh... He's about to sign a five hundred million dollar contract. I think he can afford whatever <laughs> is necessary. <laughs> five hundred million. That's it. Huh? That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, it's kind of tough because the, the pro teams have their own onboarded um, orthopedic surgeons. So it's pretty tough to get them to do regenerative medicine. The guys that I get sneak in. They say, you can't tell my trainer that I'm doing this. Well, hopefully you're helping make inroads in that regard. And, and maybe in the future, it'll be something that's more common. Well, it's becoming more and more common every day. Take a look at the Internet. Take a look at all the uh, athletes that are getting uh, PRP, platelet-rich plasma or stem cells. It's becoming endless. Nobody wants surgery. No, of course not. Why would you want a surgery if you don't need one? Well, I think some people, uh, they just think they, they should do it, and then they're going to feel better about having done something. You know that. I agree, and I'm going to be honest with you. There was um, a time I was when I was a resident at UCLA, I was working at Rancho Los Amigas Hospital doing uh, spinal cord injury and brain trauma, and I had a flare of sciatica down my left leg. I could barely walk. I had back pain and uh, pain down the leg. Now, it wasn't really sciatica. I thought it was. It was a referral pattern from the ligaments in my back. And I had a friend of mine inject my low back, and the leg pain went away. But I honestly was so miserable, I was thinking of getting a surgery. You know, you go crazy. How did you find that out? How did you... Did well, because when you inject that? the when you inject the ligaments, which can refer anywhere, and actually that ulnar collateral ligament that you're talking about, the Tommy John surgery, if you press on another ligament nearby, the annular ligament, you can look this stuff uh-huh. up on Google, it can refer down the arm like a carpal tunnel syndrome. So a lot of times people come with carpal tunnel. I check the elbow, and we find it's an annular ligament problem. We inject that. And then the carpal tunnel syndrome um, feelings go away because it wasn't carpal tunnel. Medicine's complex. And one of the biggest problems we know about is become so highly technical that doctors are losing their skills in examination. Most people that come in with a failed surgery, when I ask if the surgeon touched them, they go, no. They just put an MRI on the board or an x-ray and showed me what had to be cut. Now, to me, personally, in my humble opinion, that's not a good way to practice medicine. No, no, you wouldn't both go. You got to touch the body, take the time, move the person around. And a lot of times people come in and they go, I've got pain right here and I can't find it. Or they'll say, I've got arthritis in my hip. And what I'll do, if I think it's something else beside that that's causing the pain, is I'll inject the area with lidocaine. If the pain goes away, you know, lidocaine is a local anesthetic. If the pain goes away, I know that's the pain generator. Do you, do you understand i got to be Sherlock Holmes? <laughs> yeah. I can see no, that. I'm serious. <laughs> and then there's some people that come in and they go, um, I have terrible pain in my whatever, knee. And I go, good. Sorry you have that. Where is it? And they go, well, I don't have it right now. And then I have to be super Sherlock Holmes. And what I'll do is I'll send them out to the foyer in our building and I'll have them run up and down the stairs. And they come back and go, now I can show you where it is. So you got to be smart. You got to take time. And there are times when I've had, and then you got to be off of pain medicines. People come in sometimes and they're on narcotics and they don't even know what day it is, let alone where their pain is. You know, the first thing I want to do with the patient who's on narcotics is wean them off if they'll do it. And believe it or not, most patients on narcotics, if you very slowly wean them off, their pain goes away. Really? Yeah. Narcotics upregulate the pain receptors. I'll be done. So medicine's confusing. It's complex. And there's so many elements to it that most doctors today don't even get into. And they're too much of a rush. They're not making a good living the way insurance has cut them down. And uh, they've got to see so many patients. I've been, um, in my training at UCLA, I would do a lot of orthopedics uh, surgeries because I wanted to learn 
you know, about surgery. I wanted to be a surgeon at the time. And uh, some guys would see 60 people a day. Can you imagine that? Wow. Do you think they're doing examinations? Do you think they have time? No, of course not. No, no, they're just kind of weeding out which ones are surgical cases and sending the rest to physical therapy. And uh, I'm not putting surgeons down, believe me. They do the hardest work there is in medicine. It's very physical, and mentally it's, it's grueling because, uh, you know, I don't care what they tell you. A lot of people are getting hurt. That's a hard thing to have on your conscience when you hurt somebody. Yeah, so, because in surgery, that's a lot of stress on your body, I guess. It is. And um, when, in the days when I was doing surgery... We'd be on our feet sometimes for 20 hours straight. Wow. <laughs> Cranking them out. It's exhausting. So my hats go off. My hat goes off to the surgeons. I love them. I just don't like all of the surgeries they are doing. If you break a bone, please rush to the surgeon. Do you understand what I mean? And there's a lot of surgeries that I actually send people out to. Sometimes if people get a, um, a biceps tendon rupture at the elbow, they need a surgery. You know, if it's a big rupture. If it's a little tear, yeah. they don't. Yeah. Typically, we can help that. So it just all depends. I don't honestly remember the last time I referred someone to surgery. I know I get a lot of people who come in who've been to a surgeon and are ready to get a surgery. I just had an email this morning, actually. Um, a guy emailed in saying, I'm scheduled for a surgery in 10 days on my hip for arthritis. Can you help me? And I, I, I got a hold of my staff and I said, get him in in the morning. I want to see him right away. Because if they need a surgery, I'll tell them. If they don't, I'll tell them they don't. But if they do, I'm going to tell them. And I'll tell them which surgeons to go to. I'll tell them the best guys in town that I think uh, have the best success. And that's another thing. If you're going to get a surgery, go to the guy who does the most of them. Same thing with regenerative medicine that I do with platelets and stem cells. If you're going to get it done, don't go to a chiropractor. Don't go to some lecture where they feed you and then tell you that they're going to take care of you. Go to the guy who does the most. Right. Ask your doctor, how many of these did you do today? When I go to national meetings, everybody comes up to me and goes, you know, I, you're pretty famous. You know, you do so much of this. How do you do so much? A lot of guys say, you do more in a day than I do in a month. Don't go to that guy. <laughs> wow. Don't go to that guy, you know. Go to yeah. the guy who does it all day long. Whatever it is in medicine, I don't care. You know, I mentioned this on the show many times. Um, about six weeks ago or so, I had a cardiac ablation where they put a catheter up through the groin, up into the atrium of the heart, and they actually burned some of the tissue where the pulmonary um, vein from the, from the lung goes into the atrium. And it gets rid of ectopic um, beats, arrhythmia in the heart. And after that procedure, I woke up without any arrhythmia of atrial fibrillation. How did I find the doctor? I checked out every frickin' doctor in town. I wanted to go to the guy who did the most. I went to a guy named Eric Bush, B-U-C-H at UCLA, fell in love with him, and he was my guy. There are other good guys in town. He's not the only one, but he's a guy that has a lot of heart, and for cardiac ablation, I think he's amazing. I had, I had actually had an amazing day at UCLA. I got there at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, they did the procedure, and I was I was pretty blissed out the whole day because I loved, um, he, you know, these guys are called electrophysiologists for cardiac ablations. Oh. They're cardiologists that train specifically in this. So Eric Bush is one of the top guys in the world, and I absolutely love him and came out of there without AFib. So I'm happy man. I'm back to doing all my sports, and uh, things are going well. So, yeah, be careful choosing a doctor. It's very important to get the guy who does the most. 
And right. uh, I don't care what kind of medicine that is. You know, always check out, ask the doctor, how many of these did you do today, yesterday, last week, last month, last year? Don't be afraid of doctors. You know, the day of the doctor being God is over. <laughs> when I grew up, um, we had a friend, uh, I forget what his name is. His last name was Lichtenstein, and he was he was a surgeon, and surgeons back in those days were the head of the hospitals. They may still be today in some cases. But uh, my, family, my family kind of prayed to this guy. And um, he was a great guy, great surgeon. But, um, you know, today we don't look at it like that. You know, we look at it like surgeons or whatever kind of doctors there are, are human beings. And they can make mistakes too. And don't listen to them. Get second opinions. Get third opinions. Find the person you resonate with. Mm-hmm. You know, it's important. If you're going to get some some kind of procedure done, especially surgery, find somebody who talks to you. There was actually a guy in town that I called. He was supposed to be one of the best um, for my cardiac ablation. He wouldn't talk to me. Huh. His nurse talked to me, and I said, can I do a telemedicine conference with him? I don't want to drive to Beverly Hills and end up not liking him and spending half my day waiting and all that. And she said, no, you have to come in to see this guy. I said, well, he's not the guy for me. You know, you got to find what works for you. Nice, yeah. So anyway, uh, Ronnie, God bless you. I appreciate uh, this call. I think it helped a lot of people learn an awful lot about medicine and about Tommy John surgeries, the ulnar collateral ligament, and how very often a surgery is not the right thing for what we think is a certain type of injury. It may not even be that that's causing the problem. Well, thank you for your extended explanation. I I do appreciate that. Yeah, and for anybody who thinks they want a surgery, please make sure before you get one, a couple things. Make sure that the surgeon touches your body to find out what's going on and doesn't just decide based on a diagnosis in an MRI or CT scan or an X-ray, that's bad medicine to me. But that's just me. I'm just one guy. You know, I could be wrong. Um, And the other thing is always find a guy, if you're going to do surgery especially, um, that does the most. But, you know, I'm going to tell you this. Sometimes, you know, the the number one reason, um, not number one reason, number three reason for death in our country is iatrogenic cause. That means things that doctors give you going to a hospital, the wrong medicine, something like that. So be careful. God bless you all. I appreciate you all. If you want to call the office, the phone number, my staff is there. They can give you a free phone consult. It's 800-300-9300. The website where you can email me is www.jointrehab.com. God bless you, Anita and Alex and the staff, Suzette and everybody. I love you all. Thank you. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Living Pain-Free with Dr. Mark Darrow. And now that you've heard Dr. Darrow, call his office at 800-300-9300 and speak to one of his joint rehab experts for free and ask for a copy of his book, Stem Cell and Platelet Therapy. Schedule an appointment by calling 800-300-9300. That's 800-300-9300. Or go online to jointrehab.com. Dot com. Again, the website is jointrehab.com. Living Pain-Free with Dr. Mark Darrow is heard Saturdays at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and 5 p.m. here on AM870, The Answer. Take the first step toward a pain-free life. Call to schedule an appointment at 800-300-9300. That's 800-300-9300. Live long and pain-free. And thanks for joining us today.